Hey y'all, I wanted to give you an update on our plants and our garden and what we've done. Um, we keep expanding what we're going to do, so I'm going to show you all of that. But our plants are looking really good. I have them all out here. I'm kind of hardening them off. Um, we've been leaving them out overnight as long as it's been above like 50, 55 degrees. Um, so everything's looking pretty good. When we overheated the greenhouse, uh, some of the smaller plants cooked. So I have like six cups over there. Oops, there. <laughs> right there that are all they're goners and a few more that are a little peaked but I think they're gonna be all right and come back from it but most of them are looking really good I'm going to pick I went through a preliminary pick and picked like 80 to keep but then I'm not really sure I might keep more I might I don't know so um, I'm gonna wait till I know for sure what we're putting in the garden and have the health of the rest of the plants make sure that they look really good before I sell some but I do have a lot of people interested in um, buying and then I have my peppers. My germination was okay. I'm, it was like eh, mediocre germination, but they look pretty good. I'm going to um, go ahead and start some more peppers because two reasons. One, I need more peppers. And two, mostly the biggest reason is because I'm addicted to starting plants and I can't help myself. And I'm, my uh, bell peppers didn't do great germination wise. So I'm going to do some more of those. I'm getting some fresh seeds from Seeds for Generations because the seeds I had were older and maybe they're just not as, you know, they just didn't do as well because of the age. I mean, I'm talking like I got them in 2012 or 2013. So I'm going to be starting more of those. I'm going to get poblanos because only one germinated and it looks really puny. It hasn't really done anything. Uh, I'm going to get some fresh potting mix to start the new ones in. I'm going to start them in little cells in the house um, and get them going. And then they should be... Uh, in those little cells and then go straight in the ground from there after a while and then what else am I doing seemed like there was another pepper I was gonna start more of, but I can't remember I'll have to do an inventory on them but they look really good we transplanted our basils and our lemon balm and bee balm I believe I know it was lemon balm so they all look really good we dug up some sage that was, I know it was probably really wasn't the right time of year, but we found over here that the other people that lived in the double wide had in their raised beds that they took down and it was there. So we went ahead and dug it and put it in pots um, because we needed to use that space and we were hoping, well, if it grows and it does great, then great. If not, I have sage started too, but we thought we would try. And then, so the perennial garden is a weed bed, but that's okay. We haven't really, we pruned the raspberries and blackberries. Um, you can see we have some asparagus coming up. This one we're letting go to seed. It was really thin. That one is thin. We'll let it go. But you can see those two fatty fat ones. We've been cutting asparagus. There's a thin one behind it too. We've been cutting it pretty much every day. We don't get enough for a meal, so we just cut it and share it and eat it raw. It's really yummy like that. Everybody likes it. Um, the rhubarb is doing good. I probably need to go ahead and harvest that. I don't know much about rhubarb because we've never grown it before, so we'll see. Uh, the raspberries and blackberries are all looking good back there. We're going to have to get, and then of course the elderberry bushes are doing really good. We're going to have to get some bird netting before they start really producing to put over them because the birds will definitely get into that and eat that. We're trying to figure out too what we can do to definitely keep the chickens out of here. Um, they're not getting in here too much, but we're going to have to, you know, make sure they really can't. We're going to come in and weedy it and clean up and we're going to put our, a lot of vining stuff in this area you can see it's nice and big and we can just put in you know melons and some vining squash things like that we cleaned that area up this used to be a strawberry bed is what our landlord told us and so we we did it and tilled it and what we're going to do there is plant flowers we have a lot of zinnias started and we thought that would be a really pretty place to just kind of stick our zinnias in the ground over there and attract a lot of pollinators so that's that and then of course you've seen our raised beds. I'll show you how they're looking. Not that we've really done anything more with them. Um, they're looking really weedy. We've got to get over here and clean them up. Weed them and till them. So our greens, whoop, I'm gonna stand up on the wall here. Hope it don't fall. Um, we've got our peas are coming up. There's a lot of grass and weeds, but the peas are looking good. The bok choy, something is eating it, but it's coming up. Lettuce. Broccoli, cabbage, all that's in there and coming up. Um, I transplanted some marigolds and nasturtiums in the corners of some of the beds and they're looking pretty good. But we haven't actually put anything out there yet. We have about a week and a half until we're safe to put our plants, and our tomatoes and stuff out and start planting. So we're going to trellis these and we have a really cool trellis idea. Um, 
we were going to try this with cattle panels, but then Derek came up with a brilliant plan for something for free over here. So we're really excited and you'll see that in a few videos away because we haven't done it yet. <laughs> but when he does it, you'll see and it's going to be really cool. Um, but yeah, we're going to mostly, I think these beds are for the most part going to actually end up being tomato beds because I have so many tomatoes and that's fine. We were like, oh, this was going to be all our space. And then yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't happen because we need more space. Like, who am I kidding? All right, I'm trying not to fall all of our parts for our greenhouse um, are piled here. We still have the frame up, but we're gonna take it down because like we said, we're not gonna actually permanently assemble it until we can get the plastic for it, the correct plastic. So, walk through a spider web. Ooh, it's on my arm. Okay, anyway, so let me show you what we did over here because this is what's really exciting. This is where we had the greenhouse hoop set up um, and then the double wide was right here, but it's gone now. So we came over here and these four plots, two, three, four, used to be raised beds. These people had raised beds there. So um, they actually had plastic under it and we pulled the plastic out. We were able to pull it out from under the dirt and then Derek borrowed a tiller for the tractor from the neighbors and um, their tractors broke down. Ours was running so it worked out. They said, hey, yeah, till our gardens for us with your tractor, borrow the tiller and till your stuff. So it's a win-win situation for both of us. So we tilled that, we added some more compost. Um, we, I'm jumping around cause I'm so excited. We have these two little areas tilled. We have along the fence and then along down there tilled. And then there's four blueberry bushes. We're gonna have to cover them. So I'm trying, <laughs> try to be cohesive cause I'm like, ah, I'm all over the place. I'm so excited. But anyway, this, these two middle beds, we're gonna um, do arched cattle panel trellises with our cucumbers. We're gonna do, we have two types of pickling and one slicing variety of cucumber we're gonna put there and we're gonna arch them it on from close to the inside to inside because there's a wide space there. So we're gonna do it like inside to inside. Then we have the whole outside of each bed and we're not sure, we're thinking about putting squash on the outside. The kids are gonna share the outside beds and they're gonna plant whatever they want. I know that they have some tomatoes, they have some peppers, they have some flowers. Um, we're just gonna let them go crazy and do what they want in their beds because that's, that's how kids learn to garden and to love gardening. You know, if you make it very stringent and make it strict on, okay, you gotta follow the rules and you gotta do this and that and plant and you dictate what they're doing, it's gonna become a chore and they're gonna hate it. But if you teach them to love the plants they're growing and just, plant what they want. I mean, that's what I do. I'm not stringent on myself. I don't go out here and have a strict plan. I'm like, you know, I'm just, I enjoy it. I love it. And if I made it hard, I wouldn't enjoy it. So I just try to make it as fun and free and easy as possible for them and for me. And so they're all, all of them have picked stuff and are really excited about planting stuff. So, um, and when your kids grow their own food, they're more inclined to eat it. So if your kid thinks they don't like certain vegetables, but then they grow a plant, they're going to eat that. They're going to at least give it a try and they might find they like it. They might still hate it, but at least they did it and they grew it and they worked hard and they were able to harvest it and try it on their own. So then we have these two plots right here. They're left like a little walkway in between. We're going to do, um, and we showed you over there in the driveway. I forgot it's covered in plastic. We're going to do all of our sweet corn in that big long strip. So over here, we're going to do our glass gym corn. We love that stuff. Um, it's really cool. I actually have a blog post about it and I'll link it below. Uh, and it was saved by one man for many, many years. And then it was the, I went on a wait list when I read about it on the internet several years ago and I was, uh, the first year was available. I was on the wait list and it was a very limited quantity and I was like one of the lucky people who got on the list early enough and got a pack. And the seeds I have are actually still from my original corn I've saved uh, throughout the years. So it's really cool and exciting to have something like that. It's an Indian corn. Um, so it makes me, you know, excited because I have an Indian heritage. It's really cool. Anyway, all that to say, that's a, it's really a, it's technically a popcorn, but it doesn't pop well, but it's really, really good for grinding. It's kind of a purple color when you grind it. So um, we'll grind it and make cornmeal with it. And it's like purple cornbread. Who wouldn't want pur purple cornbread with no dyes in it? That's like awesome. And then we bought strawberry popcorn and we're gonna plant. We just got one pack of strawberry popcorn seeds. So we're just gonna plant a little patch right here. And we'll plant all of our corns in succession so they don't cross pollinate. And then over here, we've got in ground a big long row here 
and then it goes way over there and we are going to be doing green beans in one section I'm not sure I have blue lake bush beans I have like a pound of seeds so I have a ton we'll probably plant them into two to three plantings we can get it because they're fast they're like 60 day maturity beans um we get two to three plantings here so we're gonna um if I do them all, I can them. That's what I do to preserve them for the most part, can be. And so um, if I plant like all of them at one time and try to, I can't keep up with that. I can't snap them and can them all just too much. So we're going to plant them in succession and do two or three plantings so we can keep up with that. The other thing we did, we bought potatoes. Um, we just bought bagged potatoes from the grocery store. That's what we've done a lot in the past because um, it's always worked for us. And I, uh, I always plan to order seed potatoes. And then I never get around to it. And then it's, we're really late. Like we could have put potatoes in the ground in March and it's almost May. So it doesn't matter. It'll be fine. We're going to do it anyway. So we've got them. Um, we put them in a brown paper bag and put them in the dairy barn because it's cooler in there and dark and let them sprout their eyes so that we can. And we'll do a lot of videos or not a lot, but we'll do a video on how we prep our potatoes and plant them. Um, when that time comes, we did that. We've bought some sweet potatoes that we're going to. Uh, make sweet potato slips out of so we can do sweet potatoes so all this should be potatoes and green beans and then we're possibly going to do on the very far end of that bottom because it just drops off downhill from there we're possibly going to do some more vining like melons over there um, we haven't decided 100% but that is kind of the idea at this point we have a lot you know we're going to do okra we're going to do um, cucumbers and we're going to do green beans and we're going to do squash several types of squash summer squash winter squash we're gonna do um, lots of tomatoes obviously <laughs> and peppers and some flowers and herbs and all of the good things so we're just trying to I'm really not a planner planning is not my thing I like I like the idea of planning but when I try to plan I just like I don't know and then I never follow the plan it's just not in my brain capacity it's my personality type um, yeah it's just, if you look at Meyer, Myers-Briggs and you read about my personality, it's just, I can't help it. It's just me. But uh, I try, and it doesn't work. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so we're really excited about the garden this year.